Hey guys, welcome here to this episode of the Scott Show. We have a very special guest, Mr. Ashton Ray. We're going to be talking about his musical career and his brand new single, Sober. So i got Ashton here on the line. Ashton, how you doing today, man? Good, man. How are you? I am doing good. I tell you what, I'm, I just got done loading up my vehicle for a little show I got going on tonight. And uh, that's about really all that's happening in my world. So basically yeah. what I want to do is kind of get talking to you about uh, your beginnings. Like, where are you from originally? Um, so originally, uh, my family is from Whitehall, Illinois. So um, a lot of my family is there. But we, we've moved around a lot growing up. Um, I spent a lot of time in Texas and a lot of time in St. Louis and such. But, yeah, mostly Illinois area. Awesome, man. Well, I heard you say Whitehall, and I had talked to you earlier a couple of days ago and I uh, mentioned that I uh, asked you if your dad's name was Chris, and it is, and yeah. told you that he was uh, my uh, boss at my very first job at Hardee's there in Whitehall. I was a crew yeah. member <laughs> making them thick burgers, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my dad, man. That's my dad. He's a, he's a great guy. Oh, yeah, fantastic, dude. I tell you, he was one of the funnest managers to work for, and uh, he showed me the ropes. I tell you, I, every time I go to a Hardee's, I still am like, man, I love that job, except for the end of the night whenever we had to uh, clean the char boiler. Oh, my gosh, or wash <laughs> it in the big sink. Oh, I despise that, but thank God that I, that I don't do that anymore. And shout out to <laughs> you guys out there that if you guys are out there cleaning char boilers, I feel <laughs> yeah, you. I feel bad for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you got to make a buck in this world, though, let me tell you. So let's uh, get on here with uh, talking about your music and everything. Uh, you got your new single, Sober, that's out right now on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, all over the place. Where anywhere where you can get music at, streaming it, it's there. Yeah. And so basically I want to talk about where, uh, maybe like in your childhood, or where, when did you kind of get interested in singing, writing, and just wanting to do this? Yeah, man. So in high school, um, I actually did music in high school. I was in a, like a show choir and everything else. Um, just out of one random day, um, I posted a video on Facebook, actually, and um, it got a lot of hype and attention from me, you know, from the kids in high school. And, um yeah, it just started from there. Basically, just, like, a lot of people were like, yo, you're really good. Like, why don't you just keep doing this? And I did it all throughout high school, and eventually I just stopped. You know, like, you eventually get to that age where you just need to progress in life, and you got to do what you got to do. And um, so I got my own place, got a girlfriend and everything else, and just didn't have the time. And, um, yeah, now I'm in college and doing it now, and everybody's – the hype is really real around here in my college town. Everybody's loving the song, and it's it's – progressing and going everywhere it's going like wildfire honestly that is awesome i'm glad to hear that man that's actually how i came uh into your music was uh through your uh cousin is he is clayton your cousin uh he's my uncle yeah he's your uncle yes yeah i went to school with him and he uh shot me over uh one of your songs or something like put me in touch with this dude i tell you what i think it was uh well we'll, we'll get into talking about that other song here in a bit but uh, kind of what else, you said you lived in Texas for a little bit. Uh, what area did you live in down there? Yeah, I lived in Corpus Christi for uh, a, a good part of my life for sure. Um, we we moved back and forth um, from you know Illinois, to Texas, to St. Louis, and such. Um, I guess my parents could never really figure out where they wanted to be. But um, yeah, I lived in Texas for a good part of my life. I would say a good chunk of it for sure. Yeah, I've been to Corpus Christi one time actually. Back in the day, I. Uh, I used to be like a, a solo indie acoustic pop rock artist, I guess you'd call it. And mm-hmm. I went on a, a couple tours, and Corpus Christi was, ended up being one of the dates that we hit. And it was it was a different world back then. Like it was like uh, I was the only like act like in my genre playing, and it was a bunch of metal bands from the area playing. And it was in some like back room of this like butcher shop. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that vaguely. I remember that we uh, had to pay like a permit fee. We camped out on the beach in Corpus Christi. I forget what yeah. that beach is called. Um, but, it's called yeah. North Beach. Yeah, North Beach. Um, yeah. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, like Corpus Christi. Wow, man. Like the the music scene there is so crazy. I mean, um, it's so different. Like, there's a big genre of like rap music that people love, but there's also like really hard metal and like 
people collide together and it's just like it's not what you'd normally see it's just it's like where am i and (laughs) yeah like where i live now i live in kansas city area now and like the genre out here that's really popping that i've noticed is like more like the edm and yeah it's just wild like every city's different and like it's just that's something like super interesting yeah, I definitely agree with you there. It's like uh, in, in every city that's kind of known for something, like say like Nashville, it's like most people here of Nashville, Tennessee, they think automatically country music because it is the home of country music. But that's not to say that there is not a thriving like rap, hip hop, and rock scene going on out there because there is, you know. And yeah. the, a, a lot of musicians, even like, like say Seattle, Washington, you know, is known for more like the grunge rock and the rock scene. And a lot of folk singers have came out, came out of there. So you, you never really know. It's just really, it, to me, really, it, it just comes down to good music and what uh, people can latch on to. Yeah, for sure. So now that you're up there in Kansas City, you said you're in college. What, what are you studying up there? Yeah, man, so I go to the uh, University of Central Missouri. I think the other day when we were talking, um, I, I was an aviation major. I literally just switched my major to last night on, like, a, a spontaneous choice. Um, so, yeah, that, that's new to me. But, yeah, my new major, honestly, is a uh, – I'm the Bachelor of Music Science, so I'm doing basically oh, a, wow. a music producer, yeah. Well, dude, you'll, you'll get to know, learn a lot there. I mean, that's going to do nothing but help you as an artist yourself. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, I literally just did it last night at, like, 11 o'clock at night, and <laughs> it was – yeah, I was like, I was debating, I'm like, do I want to do this? Like, I'm already a sophomore. Like, I don't really want to redo some classes. But at the same time, like, I think it's something that would uh, interest me more and, like, drive me to want to go to school. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, then my my new major is going to be a, basically a music producer, and I'm minoring in uh, music law. Dude, yo, man, that, that that's another big thing. That's one thing. A lot of artists will ask me, like, since they're just starting out, like, how to, like, do I copyright every song? Do I copyright an album? What do I do? So you're already going to, I mean, you're going to get on the ground level and be able to know that stuff, and that is a huge, huge advantage to a young yeah. artist. Yeah, I, I, I'm i definitely super excited. Like, I've always told myself, like, you know, especially, like, last night when I was talking to myself about it, I was like, you know, if, you know, later down the road, whenever I finish doing this music stuff for myself, you know, like, I feel like you can only be an artist for so long. And, Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, eventually I can take those, you know, connections or, uh, what I learned in school and become a, maybe like an A&R for like a a label or, you know, something like that. You can even start your own business. I mean, there's tons of avenues, especially in this day and age of the music business. It's in a, such an influx of change, you know, no longer, like, do you need, do you absolutely need a record label to make a career for yourself? Right. And, but I mean, having a label definitely does not hurt. <laughs> it just yeah, makes of course, it work yeah. harder for you. <laughs> yeah. It definitely, like, having, being at, like, a, having a label there for you definitely, it definitely helps, yeah, for sure. But I agree, mm-hmm. like, I've seen so many, you know, independent artists, like, make just as much money or just as big as, you know, fan base as an artist that has a label. Right. Let's get to talking about uh, your uh, brand new single, Sober. Where uh, was it recorded at? And uh, then we'll talk about the songwriting process after that. Yeah, so Sober was, um, it was recorded out in Denver, Colorado. Um, It was at a studio called called Side 3 Studios. Um, The studio atmosphere out there was amazing. I mean, the guy that engineered my song, Andy, is an amazing guy. Um, He's engineered for Ed Sheeran and Kanye West and more. Um, so like it was, it was definitely a, an amazing experience and, um, the people that went out there with me to uh, help me finish writing the song. Cause yeah, we, I actually didn't have the song all the way written until like we got there. And, um, I was so nervous cause like we were in the studio and we were just trying to, basically we were just trying to figure out on the fly and we, we made it happen. The engineer gave me his out, you know, his, his thoughts of it and, he was like, you know, let me try this, and we made it happen. So, dude, that's pretty ballsy. It's t- I couldn't imagine going in with a unfinished song and then it coming out as I mean as well as it did. I'd be too nervous. Were you nervous? I, I was. Oh nervous. yeah, man, yeah, I was nervous, <laughs> man. I was I was sitting at the hotel the night before, like freaking out, and I was like telling my friends that were with me, I'm like, look, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm gonna go in here and like waste all my time, and 
I'm like, these guys are going to look at me like I'm crazy. I was like, they're not going to, like, take me serious. And But, yeah, we did it. It turned out to be something, like, way better than expected. So was this your first time in the pro studio? Yep. Yeah, this is my first time in like a like a professional professional setting. Um, yeah, I've been I've been to like some like you know studios like some in KC and such in St. Louis, but this is like the first one that's like professional professional setting that's worked with like they have like accommodations with like labels and stuff. So mm-hmm. um, going in there, you know, with them working with like Atlantic and Def Jam and Capitol Records and stuff like that, like that's where their main artists go to. So it's like it's cool knowing that I recorded in the same room as, you know, Machine Gun Kelly or Ed Sheeran or Justin Bieber. Right. So those guys definitely knew what they were doing, man. I tell you, I, I loved how polished the track ended up coming out. It was, I mean, fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely a different experience whenever you get to go into a pro studio for the first time because it's like, all right, this, it, it becomes even realer, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's cool, like, it's cool to, like, you know, like, pick their head a little bit because, um, you know, they, they've heard it all. You know, they've, mm-hmm. they've they've heard every single artist that's out there. You know, they've worked with multiple kind of genres. And so they know where you're coming from. Like, they know what you're expecting. They know what you want. And um, the big thing is, is, like, what I tell all these, you know, artists that have been reaching out to me, like, in my local area is, um, you know, they're like, oh, how'd you get your song sounding so good and stuff like that? And, I told them all the same thing is that you get what you pay for, you know, like yes. you, either you work hard and you work for the best, you know, outcome, or you're going to not work hard at all and let it come out. Not as good. I, I agree with you a hundred percent there, man. And I, uh, I told people the same thing. They're like, well, I don't want to spend the extra, you know, if it, it may even come down to something as small as like, an extra three hundred dollars to go to another place. I'm like, you know, we'll push the idea of the release because everybody's in such a hurry. Sometimes it's worth yeah. that time and the extra money to get that polished product. Oh, for sure. Like I, I waited a long time to drop sober. Like it was, I was writing sober for a while and I kind of like pushed it away because I didn't know if like I wanted to drop it or not. And um, just because it was more of one of those songs that like has a lot of meaning behind it and like a lot of feeling. And I'm one of those kind of type of people that I was like, I'm scared to show my feelings. So it's like, I really didn't want to be that person of judgment. And mm-hmm. I didn't want people to think of me different because of past experiences. So it's like, I was so skeptical of like dropping this song. and But we did it anyway. So I'm glad I did. It's definitely a very bold song, for sure. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it really is. I agree with you, though, there. It, it is tough whenever, especially if you write something that's so personal to you as a person, you know, it's like you're just you're putting it out there for strangers to hear. But sometimes, as I'm sure you found, there's some people, you'll find that people relate to it, and and that, and that helps draw the connection to your fan base even more. But, I mean, that's that's the whole thing that's beautiful about this music industry is you can make yourself vulnerable and connect to people and be able to monetize that and then build a whole empire on it if you if, if if you want to. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk about the songwriting process and the actual lyrical content of that. Was you, you, you pretty much write all your own stuff? Or do you co-write yeah. it or what? Yeah, I write all my own stuff. Um, but this song, I had a little help, like I said, with the engineer and um, one of my buddies that went with me, his name is Reese. Um we we wrote the song sober, we finish out the sober and um yeah, overall like I write my own music, like all the verse and chorus and such was, you know, written by me. Um yeah, it the writing process was you know, was very unique. Um it was more for like a past experience, you know, and stuff that has happened to me in my past and other people's pasts. Like um I I posted on, you know, Snapchat and stuff and wanted to get other people's opinions or like their thoughts of you know if they ever felt depressed or um stressed out or such and a lot of people was reached out back to me and i basically took all those feelings and put it into one song and basically just you know to relate to everybody that's listening to the song like you're not you're not alone for sure you know i agree man that's that's an important message that folks they're going through say a hard time they do feel alone i mean i 
I've been there. I'm, you've been there a lot. I mean, a lot of people have been there, but it, it's, it's such a, a common thread that we all share. But it doesn't. It still to this day does not get talked about enough. And it's good to have music as a connecting force for us all to come together. You know, that's one. That's one thing that drew me to music was just that there's a, there's a community in music of all genres. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. One, I mean, like. If it wasn't for music, like, I definitely don't know where I would be, like, me personally. Um, like, music definitely makes it easier for me to wake up every day and do what I do, so. I hear you, man. Well, so as far as uh, talking about producers and stuff, it just the side the thing popped in my head of uh, re- I'm working on recording at my next upcoming release. I work with this excellent producer. His name is Cameron, and... Uh, I've never had a producer truly produce me as much as he did as far as like making sure that I enunciated words. Cause I, I sometimes you get more relaxed in singing the song, especially after you've sang it, you know, hundreds of times, you know, and then you're in the studio and you're singing it another hundred times, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's just the enunciation. And so now that's, I even think about it during my live shows is be sure to enunciate. And it's slowly becoming a second nature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and as funny thing is that Andy did the same thing. Like we were sitting in there recording, and um, he would do the same thing. Like he'd be like, "Nope, let's redo that part again," or "Nope, let's go back and do this again." You know, like mm-hmm. you're 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 not you're not saying it right, or it's not coming out right. I hear you. Now, on the as far as the music side of it, the beats and everything, who did, did you do that, or did was that produced for the song, or kind of how did that come about? Yeah, so that was actually the beat was actually produced for the song. Um, I didn't make that beat. Um, I wish I did. That's pretty it's pretty clever and pretty smooth. So, um, but yeah, I that that would beat was made for the song like specifically. Awesome. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, what are some of your musical influences, past, present. Um, some of my influences. Um, definitely John Mayer, big kind of guy. I mean, I, I love John Mayer with it being, you know, his lyrics to his musical side of things. Um, he was one of my first, like, live concerts. So it's like I really took in everything that he's, like, presented. And um, mm-hmm. either as an artist or just as a person in general. Um, I would say some other, you know, like, influences. I would say, like, you know, Black Bear is a big influence of mine. He's a really good friend of mine. Um I definitely take in a lot of stuff that he's done in his past, like with him to where he is now. Like he started from nothing, you know, grew up as an artist and he's he's always, you know, saying like, you know, it's, it's going to take time. It's not just going to come overnight. And um, like, you just got to keep going. And, but yeah, he's, he's definitely a big influence of mine. Um, shout out to Matt. And um, another, I guess another big influence would be like, you know, Jeremy Zucker. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeremy Zucker is a big influence of mine. Like his vibe is just amazing. And it's it, 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 to me one thing though. Thank you. Going back to John Mayer, uh, what you were talking about. It seems like a lot of people I talk to, whether they're country artists, R and B, hip hop, rock band, almost everybody likes John Mayer's stuff or can connect to it or had a moment in time like where that's what they were into. Yeah, and for sure. You I said you saw him live. Place. You saw him live. I, I, I've seen him live one time as well, and it is an experience. And mm-hmm. he could play songs. I, he played, I mean, there was probably six songs he played that I didn't recall out of his whole show that may have been old tracks from an old album that I didn't remember or something, but it was all just still fantastic and true artistry, which is hard to find these days sometimes. Yeah, it definitely is. And so as far as Sober goes, uh, see, it's been out now for, as of this recording, for about a, almost a week, right? Yeah, it dropped uh, last Thursday. Yep. So what made you choose that date? Or was that just kind of a random thing, or was it picked for a reason? Um, Honestly, it was just like a random thing. Uh, I was just sitting in, you know, in my room one day, and I was like, all right, I need to pick a date that I want to drop this song. And... um. This this was like back in like May, and I was just like, I want to have enough time to like produce it right and you know engineer it right and stuff like that. And um, yeah, August first came out of like just randomly. It was just like, no, let's just do it August first. I just posted it up. I was like, yeah, it's gonna be up August first. 
Like just <laughs> no no thought or anything. Just yep, August first. Yeah. Hey, some, sometimes with uh, the right feelings there, it's it's a good time to pull the trigger. Yeah. I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about the voice. I knew you had tried out for the voice at one point in the past. What was that experience like? Yeah, so the voice was very uh it was very it was a great experience. I can't say it wasn't. I mean, it was very long experience. I mean, <laughs> right. um yeah, me and my mom we went to Shake Fights Arena and we we did the whole the voice thing there and then um me and my uncle we went to Oklahoma City and did the voice stuff there as well and um it's a long process. It's not like what everybody thinks it is, you know, and it's not like you hop in front of the judges and you do your thing. No, it, it's a, it's a completely like months on months on months type of you know experience type stuff. And um, it, the wait is ridiculous long. And um, so yeah, it, it's it's a process. It's it's not a hop in and out type stuff. It's it's a it's a long long day ahead of you if you're planning on doing something like that. A lot of waiting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of waiting. Awesome, man. Let's talk a bit a little bit about getting to know you a little bit better. Let's talk about us uh, maybe what your favorite sports teams are. Yeah, so my favorite sports teams, um, I'm a big Texans, um, Houston Texans and Houston Astros fan. Um lo- love my Houston you know, my Houston teams. Um mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of my fraternity brothers here at school, they you know, they 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 tend to talk a little smack, but it's okay, you know, we, we know who's better on top. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, overall, I'm a, I'm a really big, you know, Houston Houston fan overall, like with it being basketball, baseball, or football. Um, oh, yeah. I, I love the Dallas Stars hockey. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to the Blues, though. You know, they won the cup. You know, you know I, I've heard it all. It's okay. But, <laughs> um, yeah. It's so I'm cool to see, fan. even if you're not a huge fan of a team like that that's never won it, to finally do it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm happy they won. I mean, I'm I'm glad it was them over you know somebody else. Um, but yeah, I've heard I've heard it all so far about you know the starters being knocked out by the Blues and stuff. But you know, <laughs> it's okay. There's always next year. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that, that's the beautiful thing about sports is it always comes back around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I I can't wait for it to come back. <laughs> So there are a lot of since you, since you live close to Kansas City, are there like just a sea of Kansas City Chiefs fans surrounding oh, you? Oh man, yes. There's, there's, <laughs> Especially now there's, more than ever, I'm sure. Oh God, yes. There's so many Chiefs fans. It's crazy. Like I would say, ninety five percent of you know the community where I live is Chiefs fans. Mm-hmm. That's how. Right. Like from like where I live at, it's like it's either the Bears. Or the Patriots, which I don't know, like, I mean, well, when I say the Patriots, there's only, like, two people I know that are Patriots fans, but they, are like, die hard, like, have the Patriots sticker on the back of their truck, yeah, wear how Patriots is. shirts to the gym every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly how it is here. Heck, yeah. What, what about TV shows? You got any, like, all-time favorites or what you're watching now? Yeah, man, I'm my all-time favorite always, and until the day I die, will be The Office. Um, Heck yeah, I, I watch that show, per, you know, pretty religiously, you know, and uh, I would say that I've taken a lot of traits from a lot of the characters on that show. So <laughs> I, I, I definitely look up to that show a lot. Um, yeah, I guess that's like really the only TV show I ever like really watched. Heck yeah, that's not a bad option, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm pretty sad they're taking it off Netflix, but hey, we, we, maybe we just got to go out and buy the DVDs. That's it. So. That's right, man. I tell you, I I I still buy DVDs every once in a while for like stuff that I that I really, 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 really like, which is like basically stand up comedy or wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I love stand up stand up comedy a lot. Yeah, who's who's your favorite? Would you say favorite stand up comedian? Man, I would say Kevin Hart, but I've also been watching a lot of this dude lately too. His name is Trevor Wallace. And he's so Oh funny. yeah, Trevor Wallace, yes. Yeah, he's hilarious, dude. Like I actually just like I watched like two hours of him last night. It was the funniest stuff. Um yeah, Trevor Wallace is great and uh Kevin Hart or Adam Sandler. I love those guys. Um You can't go wrong with Adam Sandler. Oh no, you definitely. Uh <laughs> growing up my dad put me on like Larry the Cable Guy and like Oh yes. So that that was always a big one for me, like growing up too. 
I tell you, whenever he first, like, really just, like, went, like, true mainstream, I, I'm sure you saw it. I mean, the Get Her Done stickers, yeah. T-shirts. I mean, it was everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, he probably didn't have trouble paying his light bill after that. I'll guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. What about, what's your all-time favorite movie you had to say? Um... I'm a, like I said, I'm a, I'm a really big Adam Sandler guy. So like anything you know with Adam Sandler in, in it, maybe like Waterboy or Happy Gilmore. Um, yeah. I also like Will Ferrell a lot too. So like Step Brothers is always a great one for me. It, it so, never yeah. disappoints. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a big comedy guy. So anything that's funny to me, like I'll watch it. Continue. Yeah. Speaking of Adam Sandler, to, the movie that one of my all-time favorites of his. Maybe it's just because, like, the life lessons it kind of teaches in it. It's funny, and it's also really sad, is the movie Click. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where he kind of controls his life with the remote. Yeah, that, that's a great movie, too. There's so many life lessons in that, just basically to enjoy the time that you're spending with your family, you know, and don't don't, don't be so selfish all the time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Heck, yeah. So what's your uh, social media handles, and where can people find you at? Yeah, man, so I'm, I'm on every uh, major platform with music, um, with it being Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and such. Um, Instagram, really, I'm pretty uh, active on Instagram, I would say. Um, I'll have to follow I you mean, on there. I don't think I'm following you on there. I'll do that right after this call. Yeah, my uh, my Instagram handle is uh, Ray Ashton, R-A-Y-A-S-H-T-E-N. Mm-hmm. And then um, pretty, you know, active on, you know, Snapchat and everything else, but... uh. Yeah, my Twitter handle is uh, Ashton Ray, and then uh, Snapchat's Ashton underscore Ray. Heck yeah, so folks, be sure you go out there and follow him. Um, so what about uh, as far as a follow-up to Sober, do you have anything in the works? Yeah, I mean, I, I recorded another song when I was out in Denver, um, this song called L.A., and it's yep. more, of like a, more of like an upbeat song. You know, it's not as sad, you know, it won't get people in their feelings, but... Um, <laughs> It's definitely going to be a great song to replace, you know, that the hype, you know, after L.A. is kind of like dying down a little bit and, you know, bring something else out. Yeah, and that song is super catchy. That was the first little snippet that I heard of anything you'd done uh, prior to even getting in contact with you. And shout out to your Uncle Clayton for uh, tying this bridge together so we can have you on here, man. Yeah, shout out to Clayton. <laughs> well, what's your... Uh, once L.A. comes out, we'll have you back on here, and maybe we'll talk about how good the Houston Texans are doing. I'm going to try to get Lamar Miller and my fantasy football team in the middle of the draft if I can here in a couple of weeks. Sure, that's a good pick right there. Heck, yeah, it is. He's solid. <laughs> I tell you, people people always think I'm crazy every year for taking him. He gets the workload. He, he, he may not get 100 yards every game, but he's solid. He had a good in, uh, finish of the year last year. Yeah, he did. I agree. Heck, yeah. All right, brother. Well, I'll let you get back to your business, and I appreciate your time, and uh, best of luck to you from here on out to the future, man. Yes, sir, man. Hey, I appreciate you for bringing me on. Yeah, no problem. We'll catch you soon. Yes, sir. Later. All right. Bye-bye. You always constant light in you Made me feel dead inside when you Seen that I was the one I just want I just want to be sober Sober